Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the next episode of the MIG build. Uh, we are making some great progress on this little EDF MIG from Hobby King. And uh, in this video, we're gonna do some fun stuff. So Nez is here helping us out. <laughs> Anyways, stay tuned and we'll dive back into this build. All right, guys, and I just want to apologize a little bit. In the summertime here, things get pretty busy with flying events and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little hard to keep up with the regular schedule of, uh, of two videos a week. And uh, anyways, we're, you know, a lot of weekends we're away. Uh, I'm away uh, at events and traveling and all that kind of stuff. So that's the reason for the little bit of a dip in frequency. But uh, Fall is coming and we are getting back into full on building season. We got lots of kits arriving pretty quick here and uh, it's going to be a bananas winter, fall and spring. So if you guys are a little bit excited to see what's coming, um, you should be, it's, it's gonna be pretty nuts. So anyways, we're diving back into the, the MIG, um, MIG build. Now, one thing that uh, I was talking with Eric and uh, one of the things he really wanted to see on this aircraft was some scale oleo struts. And uh, now when you're dealing with small aircraft like this, like if you go on uh, Horizon Hobby's website as an example, and you look up one of their kits, the landing gear with their kits, it's not a high dollar va uh, value item compared to like the landing gear on a full big uh, turbine jet. So you're not going to get specs and all that kind of stuff generally. So it's a little bit difficult sometimes finding gear like this one here from the base of the shaft to the center point I think is 107 millimeters that we needed to make it all work out. So you can't really go on all these websites and find gear that's exactly the right fit. So you kind of just have to stumble across it. Now hold that thought and I'll show you what we're going to do. But before I show you, you gotta do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below. It's right down there somewhere. Just hit it. it. Doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to the channel. It's the way to help the channel out. And uh, I would very much appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. And once you hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up as well too, because that is awesome. And it's the right thing to do. Okay, so we have here my Frank and Havoc. You know, this is the E-Flight uh, Havoc. Um, it's fine. I, I don't really like this plane. It's got some bad characteristics and it's, it has been discontinued. Now, after Eric mentioned this to me that he'd like to see some scale oleo struts or just some, some better struts on the, the aircraft, I got to thinking, hmm, how am I gonna get this figured out? And I thought, well, you know what? They almost look like they're exactly the same length as my Havoc struts. So I came out in the shop here and I measured from the base to the shaft and we are exactly 107 millimeters or whatever that measurement is. So we got a couple options. Um, we could actually pull this gear out and make it fit in that aircraft and keep the electric gear. I don't know if I'm a fan of it. Like this gear, the plastic gear is okay but the aluminum gear that we've sourced for this kit is better quality and it's gonna stand up better. So initially, right now, my thought is we're gonna pull this gear out, we're gonna check it compared to the, the struts and everything, make sure that this is actually gonna fit on there and we'll kind of go from there. So we're changing directions a little bit on this plane, but that, uh, that's what the plan is. Now these wheels are gonna be too big, so we have to change these wheels, which is okay. Uh, these axles have a fair bit of play in them, but the, the gear itself is in, is in top quality shape. So we'll put that aside for now. Other cool thing is Eric really wants me to maiden this plane. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, in order to um, finish this plane, the wings need to be glued on to the fuselage with the spars and all that kind of stuff uh, for it to properly work. So 
Uh, basically, we are gonna be gluing the wings on the plane and we're gonna be flying the plane, which is super cool. So thanks, Eric, for allowing us to do that. Um, what that ends up meaning, if you're, if you're thinking about, well, what does that ultimately mean? It means that the shipping box is gonna have to be significantly bigger and it's gonna cost Eric more money to ship the plane to him. So that's all it really comes down to. Not the end of the world, but uh, we'll make sure we get it all set up and, uh, and ready to go. Now, for any of your newbies that are watching the channel, uh, we're setting this up on the iX20 radio. This is our shop iX20 radio. Uh, and simply when you're dealing with something like this, uh, most radios will be able to do this. You can take that program that we set up on this radio. I can email it to the owner and basically he just downloads it on his radio, sets it up and binds it to the aircraft and it's good to go. Um, that's it. So what do we need to do first? We need to pull the landing gear out of my Havoc and, uh, and see how it fits, see how it mounts, see how it works. So we're gonna pull those things out and see what our next step is because we don't really know what the next step is until we get that gear out. All right, guys, and I think that uh, this is gonna work out just perfect. So I yanked all of the gear out of the Havoc. Uh, the nose wheel actually just looks perfect the way it is because the, um, I think the, the standard full-scale airplane has quite a bit smaller uh, nose wheel than the mains. Now we are switching out the mains as I mentioned, but the important thing in here is, so this pin comes out of the E-Flight retracts. Okay, so I pulled one of the pins out so far, and I'll show you how to do that. So on these E-Flight retracts, the, it's the pin that, that uh, kind of goes through the center of the trunnion pivot point. So here and there, so we undo that. It's 1.5 millimeter Allen key, and the pin comes out. And then we're left with uh, this setup here. So if we look at the center to center and then the legs, uh, hard to show you on camera, but anyways, we are bang on the exact same length there. Oops, there. So that's gonna work out awesome. Now the deciding factor here is what gear to use. Now, as I mentioned, these are much stronger gear and I think they're gonna work out a lot better. Um, regardless of which gear we use, we're going to have to do some trimming here on the wing. So what we need to do is, uh, if you take a look at this here, we're going to have to trim out kind of this section right here to allow this trailing linkage system to fit we might have to do a little bit on the back end right there, but not very much. So anyways, it's gonna work, I think, just beautifully. And I think we're gonna stick with the air up spring down gear. The other benefit to this is if you run out of air or if there's a leak or something like that, remember that these things just come down. You know, these little E-Flight retracts are nice, but there is just a ton of play in the trunnion here and uh, just not a, not a very awesome system. And of course, if there's a problem with them, you're relying on the electricity to come down. So safety wise and reliability wise, I think these are gonna work out better. So next thing we need to do is we need to drill out the trunnion on the air up spring down gear. And we need to make sure that we can get this pin installed properly. Now we have our fixing screw right there on the trunnion. And that's probably gonna be a little bit higher than the fixing current fixing crew, screw spot there. So we're probably gonna have to, uh, to sand down or grind down a new notch. Now that's not a big deal. All you do is you get it sized properly so you can actually put this pin inside there. You do up that screw, it puts a mark on the pin itself and then you take it back out and grind a little flat spot there. Okay guys, so we have got everything set up here with the gear to get this kind of finalized. So what we've done is we drilled a hole into the trunnion and that hole was big enough for the pin to fit in nice and snug. Now that existing pin, the way it's set up is we've got a flat spot on that pin at the front of the gear, the back of the gear, and we also had one on the front of the E-Flight gear and the back of the E-Flight gear trunnion. Now this setup is a little bit different. We've got one big fixing bolt 
uh, on the trunnion side down here where the allen key's in, which actually works out better because it's on the opposite side of the existing flat spot, which means we don't have any interference by the existing flat spot. So that's perfect. So next key factor is how do we get that flat spot made so everything lines up perfectly? Because you always wanna have a couple degrees of toe in on your mains so your plane tracks better. So let's go through the steps to figure that out. So first thing we have to look at is the fuselage. Now we look at the wing roots and they are parallel with each other, which means that they parallel the center line of the fuselage, which is good. That's a good first step. Next thing means that the root of the wing, so here, will also parallel the center line of the fuselage. So if we were to line this gear up perfectly flat to the root of the wing, that means that we are dead straight. Now we wanna have a little bit of toe in, so the front of our wheel, we want a couple degrees of toe in or a couple degrees towards the center line of the fuselage compared to the back of the wheel. So all we have to do is we just need to get this in the right spot. So we have a couple degrees of toe in measured against the root of the wing. We'll tighten that bolt down, which will mark our flat spot location. And then we'll pull this out and grind down a flat spot. So let's take a look at how we do that. All right, guys, so a couple different ways to deal with this um, landing gear. Uh, you can use tape, you can use a ruler, you can use a lot of different things. Basically what you do is you take the root of the wing, you measure over a certain distance. So in this case, we'll use the root of the wing. We'll measure to the ruler. On this edge, we're 143 millimeters. And we're really close there actually, 143. Going a little bit, 143, and 143. So now we've got a parallel line that's closer to the landing gear, um, and we can now take that one step further. So at this point, you take a piece of carbon rod, and what we're gonna do is we're going to hold this against the wheel, like that. And then we can parallel this and move it around to add some toe in. So right now in this spot, when I look down this carbon rod, we're perfectly in line with this side of the ruler, which means that we are straight parallel to the root of the wing. Now, if we take this wheel and add a couple degrees of toe in like that, now we know we've got a little bit of toe in. Other thing you can do is you can also uh, measure this from the uh, the leg here, the base of the leg, as long as that's got a, a nice flat surface to it, of course. So that's how we get our couple degrees of toe in on these legs. And then from there, what we do is we find our, our happy spot and we are just going to tighten down the set screw, which is in turn going to put a little bit of a mark on the pin and that's where we're gonna put our flat spot on that pin. All right, so stock wheels, new wheels. Uh, these ones are the original ones that we were planning on putting in, but we have another set now because the previous set we drilled out bigger than this, these guys. So here's the previous set that we drilled out compared to the new ones. So uh, the axle is just too big. So the new ones we drilled out to uh, 9 uh, drill bit, which uh, makes it fit nice and uh, slop free on the axles. So that's what we're gonna look like on these new axles. I think it's gonna turn out just perfect. And there's the, uh, the stock wheels off the Havoc. Now these ones are definitely too big uh, for this aircraft, for the wheel openings and these ones are going to work perfect. So to give you a shot inside the wheel openings there, that's pretty much what we're looking at. We're looking at about a quarter inch all the way around, which is, uh, is awesome, so. All right, so basically to get the flat spot on there, as I mentioned, you're just getting the leg inserted. We're getting it lined up. We tighten down the set screw a decent amount, and then when you pull this out, 
can see possibly right there above my nail is the mark for the flat spot. So that gives us our location for that. And then we just take a Dremel with a fiber bit and just put a little flat spot on there. It doesn't need to be like these guys right here. It just needs to be a nice little tiny flat spot. Other thing I did is I got the other gear drilled out and what that allowed me to do is install this gear just to see how it fits. So if we do install it this way, what's gonna happen is that wheel is gonna be the thing that sticks out the most. Now, if we flip it around the other way, we're gonna have that leg sticking out of the wing up in this area. So I think I'm gonna go with my original plan and, uh, and use the other leg, my original design. So we'll install the leg this way and that will allow everything to sink down as much as possible inside that wing. And we might have just a hair of this tire sticking out. I think that's gonna be the best looking solution as well. So that's the, uh, the plan for this gear. So it's time to put a little flat spot on that guy, but we do need to put our other leg in now and do the same lineup thing because this pin is not correct anymore. Okay guys, so we've got the other leg marked. There's just a tiny little mark right there. So all you're doing when you're doing this is you're taking a Dremel tool with your fiber disc and just needs a little tiny flat spot. Now the benefit of doing a smaller flat spot is you can adjust it if you need to. So we'll start off with that. We'll put this in the leg, tighten it down, see how it sits. And if it sits at the right angle, we're good to go. And if we have to adjust it, there's still plenty there to adjust. Okay, so when I put this back on, we are running currently parallel to the root of the wing. So we need to take a little bit of that edge off, the leading edge of that flat spot. All right, so we are all attached and everything is good to go. The only thing left for me to do is to put some Loctite on this fixing bolt. So I'm gonna take care of that. And then we will start working on the cutout for the leg itself in the wing. So there's our final Flat spot right there, so nothing too crazy, just enough to grab the screw and the screw hits the center of that and it works out perfect. Uh, we've got our wheel all mounted. There's like zero play in this wheel. Uh, we took a plastic spacer and sanded that down so it fits perfectly. And then our wheels held on with a C-clip or E-clip actually right there. So that's done. Uh, this wheel's nice and uh, not snug, it's just firm. And uh, so that'll break in nicely. I did put a little bit of lubricant on that axle as well too. So we're ready to pop that guy in, put a little bit of blue Loctite on there and tighten that one down. We got Nez helping us out here. So not tons of blue Loctite, just a little drop to hold her tight. And then with that flat spot, it's pretty straightforward now as far as tightening this down. Uh, what I do, I'll show you here, is get the um, Allen key pretty tight, or I guess start to snug it up, first of all. And you can give it a wiggle. And then as it's tightening down, it's basically gonna find that flat spot naturally.
All right, guys, so you can see the completed wing here. This is the left wing, obviously. Uh, I took some packing tape, peeled off more of the paint. I kind of suspect that we'll end up peeling all the paint off the underside of this wing before we do any repainting. Uh, the top side actually has fared pretty well because we don't really do anything to it other than that little mark uh, on the little fin thing right there. So wing is done. What we're gonna do now is we are gonna do the right wing to match this guy. So really nothing to show you on the right wing other than we're just matching everything we've already done right here. And uh, I think this wing turned out awesome. This gear is, is just gonna be absolutely wonderful for this plane, fits beautifully in there and uh, pretty awesome setup. So anyways, this part's done. So again, I won't show you any of the other wing except I'll show you the completed pair of wings. All right, so both wings are done and we managed to peel all of the paint off both wings. Uh, it was actually pretty simple, just to use compressed air. Just our, uh, our compressor down there with a spray nozzle and all of that paint very easily came off. <laughs> it. Uh, it's a little surprising and a little disappointing all at the same time. So we've got both wings done now to the same stage. So next thing we're gonna do, and this is actually the next step in the manual, is we're gonna attach these wings to the fuselage. So pretty straightforward, we've got a vertical spar and we've got two position rods there as well, one at the front and one at the back. So you can see our spar here, it has a little pocket inside, the fuselage just goes in, so uh, that's pretty straightforward. There's a little bit of up and down movement on that guy. And then uh, I drilled these position holes out. Uh, they were an eighth uh, inch size. These ones had a little bit of paint in them, so I drilled those out to be an eighth, with an eighth, eighth inch drill bit, and then I took some eighth inch rod and just cut four pieces for our position pins. So I'm really hoping that these things all line up. Uh, that would be quite disappointing if they don't, but we'll have to see what happens. Anyways, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue the wings on the fuselage, as we've talked about already. Uh, so we have to do a couple things here. Number one, the side of the wings that's already done, that's wood, so we're, we're good there. I've also drilled a hole here that lines up with the hole on the wing so we can pass all of our, our items through there. So what we need to do is a couple things on the wing side here. We need to roughen this surface up. Okay, so basically grind down the paint a little bit with the Dremel. So we've got a bonding surface for the high saw. And then what we wanna do is we wanna get these pins installed get them CA'd from the back side so they don't move when we put the wings on, okay? There's, these really don't need to be glued in super strong because all they're doing is preventing that wing from, from rotating. And then we're gonna pull our spars out here like this and we are going to put some high saw inside there, stick those down, cover this in high saw. So when we put this wing on, we've got this as a glue point and the entire surface here as a glue point. So I'm gonna get this all sanded down and ready to go and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so we've got the wings temporarily installed. So this was just to check the fit, the incidence of the wings and looks like those uh, position pins lined up very well. So good job Hobby, Hobby King for making this kit uh, accurate. So it looks good. Uh, wings are essentially now ready to get glued on. All right guys, and we'll do a, uh, a tip time now. And this tip time is brought to you by trusty bent screwdriver. So this tip time is about high sol. So when we're dealing with something like this, I like to use, uh, it's called Loctite, made by Loctite now, but uh, 9462 is the uh, long here structural stuff. Now the manual calls for 30 minute epoxy to be used. Uh, problem with 30 minute epoxy, unless you put some additives to it, it's gonna flow and it's gonna run. Uh, and that's the benefit of uh, high sol products or aero, aero epoxies. There's lots of various ones out there. I'm just partial to these because I've always used them. 
One of the downsides to, to doing these wings with this product is the cost. So we're probably gonna use almost an entire tube uh, on the wings and putting the EDF unit in. Now this two, these tubes run about 25 to $30, um, but it's extremely strong, easy to work with, reliable, and it's just an awesome product. So in the case of these wings, uh, once we use Hysol to glue these things on, there's absolutely no way they're ever coming off and I can definitely trust it. And uh, that's why we're using this product. So um, anyways, that's it. Pretty simple tip time, but uh, use good products when you're gluing stuff together. Uh, I don't like to skimp on adhesives and uh, I don't like to skimp on anything, but uh, use good products. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to use the mixing nozzles when you're using these products. Um, what I do is I just uh, use the mixing nozzle sometimes or the cap, and that's what I'll use to uh, close the product off. So I'll just show you this just so you can see it. We'll have to squeeze more out of there. This is probably enough to do maybe one side. So anyways, with high sols, they're gonna come out in two products. If they're a little bit uh, lumpy on the white side. Uh, easiest thing to do is just add some heat with a heat gun and you can either preheat the tubes before you dispense the product or you can uh, heat it up during this phase right here and uh, it just helps to make everything flow better and gets, gets rid of the lumpies. So I'm actually going to do that on this uh, this batch here. When it gets cold, that's what happens. So you can see the small little lumps in there. And I'm gonna heat this up and I'll show you the results after we add a little bit of heat to it. Now using the plastic mixing tub here, or this is just from a servo, um, is a little bit sketchy when you're adding heat, but you can see the difference there. Uh, all the little lumpies are gone. So anyways, now it's time to glue these wings onto the fuselage. So we'll do these one at a time, just to make sure that we get it nice and good. So, good time in the video as well to thank each and every one of you that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Uh, thank you very much for your donations. They are very appreciated, and uh, it's pretty awesome to see all the support coming through for the Shop Build. Uh, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, there's some links down below where you can donate to the shop build. Uh, there's been people that have donated significant amounts of money and people that have donated smaller amounts of money and each and every bit is appreciated. So thank you guys for that. As your name scroll across here, you are amazing. So I did put some CA on the inside of these pins to try and uh, hold them in place and generally it worked quite well but this front pin on this side uh, did move a little bit which is fine. Uh, we can always push it in from the, uh, the inside as well too. So we'll just give everything a nice coating of high saw. And if we have a little bit oozing out when we uh, put the wing on, that's okay. We'll just clean it up with a rag and paper towel and that will be good. So what we'll do is we'll install a bunch of high saw inside the wing spar receiver. Put some on the actual spar itself. Awesome. And we'll get that installed. We should have a, some of it squishing out, I would think. There we go. Okay, so what we'll do now is we are going to cover the spar with high saw. And we'll put a bunch inside the pocket here as well. There we go. So with all that done, what we're going to do now is try and get this wing installed and glued in place. So we'll just slide it into place. Now we got quite a bit of the uh, 
epoxy oozing out there. So we'll just spread that out. And then I just want to make sure that that front pin is installed all the way. And feels like it is. Okay, so we got a nice fit on there. We're just going to uh, clean up some of this high saw that's oozing out on the sides here. Uh, there's really, I don't think there's much reason to tape this because we're already sucked in tight against the fuselage. If I give it some pressure, we're not getting any additional um, movement towards the fuselage. So that's basically what we're doing. Let's do the same thing on the other wing. All right, guys, and it is the next evening and our wings are glued on with, like I said, high sols. So these things are rock solid now and uh, very happy with the results. So planes looking great, definitely starting to, uh, to take shape. Um, it looks, uh, looks like I might be peeling off every last bit of paint on the, uh, thanks Nez, on the wings. Um, this was a little bubble here in the paint while well, in the paint or covering and I ended up using my heat gun. Uh, the covering sucked back down but the paint started to bubble so anyways this would just sand out and then we could, uh, could touch it up or paint it again or whatever but we'll see what happens as we progress to this thing. I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're probably going to maiden the aircraft. Yes, stop buddy. We're probably gonna maiden the aircraft uh, in about a week. So not this coming weekend, the first weekend of September. And uh, we'll do the maidens and everything, make sure it's flying well and all that stuff. Then we'll focus on painting that. I see that quite often with a lot of scale aircraft. Guys, we'll get them in white, fly the thing, uh, make sure everything's dialed in. Obviously, if there's any damage, you're, you're fixing damage and then um, you are uh, dealing with it after the fact. So anyways, I think that's gonna work out good. And uh, we're getting really close on this aircraft. So uh, I think that's gonna be everything for this video, guys. Basically what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna wrap everything up uh, as far as getting this thing ready to fly. Um, you know, we did accomplish quite a bit in this video. We went with the new landing gear, got that all set up. Obviously we still have to do the front landing gear as well too. Uh, we got the wings mounted, all that stuff switched over. So we made some good progress in this video. Uh, next video, we're gonna start mounting the EDF unit. Uh, focus on the front landing gear, getting that all set up, um, the wiring and lights and all that kind of stuff. You know, all the little bits that uh, take up so much time that's still left to do. So um, again, if you guys haven't uh, subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for supporting the channel and we will see you in the next video. Hi Nez, what you doing? Oh. You want to sneak up on the back, hey? Yeah, here you come. Oh yeah, there you come. Hi, Nez. Say hi to everybody. Oh, we just want some cuddles, hey? Eh?